Kind of a funny story, about five years ago, 2019, July 2019, my wife was pregnant with our first daughter at the time, but nothing was taking off, right? I knew I wanted to be in business. I knew I wanted to build a company. And I saw an ad on Facebook for a tiny home competitor. My dad's a general contractor, so I went to him the next day. I said, hey, do you think we could build tiny homes? He said yes. So I ended up throwing up a free Facebook marketplace ad. Didn't even pay for an ad. And we had 300 inquiries in the first three days. Wherever you guys are watching this show, I would truly appreciate it if you follow or subscribe. It helps a lot with the algorithm. It helps us get bigger and better guests, and it helps us grow the team. Truly means a lot. Thank you guys for supporting, and here's the episode. All right, guys, we are going to talk tiny homes today and also weight loss. My man's here lost 123 pounds. Uh, Colton Paulus, thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Man. Yeah, dude, that's that's no joke. How long did it take you to lose that, man? So I started in September, actually. It was a, it was a funny story. I was in Hawaii at my brother's wedding. And I was just on the beach, overweight, not happy with myself, kind of focusing on building the businesses a lot, not really working out. And I just made a decision like enough is enough. Mm. It's game time. And so it was in September, September 31st to be exact. And since then, I've lost 128 pounds as of this morning. Dude, that's yeah. not even a year. That's like, what, eight months? It's been seven months. Seven yeah. months? Crazy. So that's 20 pounds a month almost? Pretty much, yeah. The first three months, I lost a lot. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Dude, that's insane. What was the daily switches that caused that? Honestly, man, just like, I, I went to the gym four to five times a week. Okay. That was a big switch. I wasn't working out. Um, and then just limited my calorie intake. So I would turn to food and stress. Yeah. That was a big thing that I did, right? Just overeating. And so I just decided that I wasn't going to do that anymore. And then just ate 2000 calories a day mm. and about 200 grams of protein. Wow. So that no, was the, literally nothing crazy. Really. Yeah. That's not yeah. bad. So yeah. no Ozambic? No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lot of people are doing that though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Everywhere. I did get on TRT. Okay. So, well, yeah. that probably helped the gym stuff. For sure. Yeah. yeah. And you wanted to be in the NFL originally, I did. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I played football at Colorado state. So I played division one football. Nice. Got a scholarship there. Um, wasn't taking it serious. Ended up having some things happen. So yeah. didn't see that through. Um, and then fell in love with business about seven, eight years ago. Okay. So you yeah. got caught up in the partying, the lifestyle. I did. Yeah. Yeah. It's Ended up easy, getting right? expelled. Dang. Yeah. What'd you do? So it's a national news story if you look it up, but it's in the New York Times, Bleacher Report. Me and a couple of buddies went to a party. Um, and the the guys at the party called out my friends, uh, actually some African American friends, and they, you know, said the N word. So they lost it. I lost it. I was defending them. Got into a fight and it was in the national news within 24 hours. Wow. So three football players expelled for beating up four kids at a party <laughs> and it just got picked up on national news. Jeez. Yeah. I wonder how it got picked up like that. That's crazy. I don't know. I think they went to the local news. So they went to the Fort Collins local press. Yeah. And then they transferred it to the Denver press. Then it went to Bleacher Report, New York Times. We ended up having like cars show up to our house, like news cars yeah. to try to interview us at our house. And we said like insane. stay in the house and get locked in. It was crazy. I mean, that's social media, man. People think they can say whatever they want For these sure. days. Yeah. And yeah. that's not the word to say. That's right. That's right. <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Yeah. There's no consequences when you say it online. No, no. And I, I have like empathy for people that get caught up in national news stories because they just lied. The whole right. story that I went through was a lie. Oh, really? Like everything they portrayed us that we did was a lie. Um, wow. And so I'm like, okay, if that can happen, obviously it happens all the time to other people. Yeah. You know, they're just trying to do clickbait right. so people can, you know, sell their news stories. So that's what happened to me. Yeah. Some of the titles were probably oh yeah obnoxious yeah. Yeah. and yeah. they're just trying to get clicks. Yeah. They tried to use like homophobic stuff. It's like, no, no, that even happened. <laughs> they just made stuff up. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. That's not. Nice. So you yeah. got kicked out and you weren't ineligible to get back into the. <laughs> yeah. I, I ended much. up transferring to Weber state. So a division one, double a school. Um, and again, just was kind of in the party scene. I just mm. didn't have my life under control. I'm a believer, you know, I believe in Christ now. And so about eight years ago, he fully transformed my life. Wow. So, you know, went all in on that. I was just trying to turn to external things for fulfillment, mm. right? And I just couldn't find it, you know? So finally, I just said, enough is enough. I'm going to turn to you. So you just went to church one day and just it took over? It was actually a moment. I was in jail. So a <laughs> little backstory, but I, uh, I had a DUI. So I was at the In-N-Out drive through Me and a couple of buddies went to a party, yeah. went to a bar, um, and I was driving drunk. And so we went through the In-N-Out drive through I got a DUI, pulled out of the drive through and I was in jail. And I felt like a still small voice. I know looking back, it was the Holy Spirit speaking to me saying like, do you want this with your life? Mm. Like, like why, why are you going down this path? And I just looked around and I saw, you know, people that were in a bad way, you know, like they, they were going to jail consistently and I just made a transformation. Like I'm not drinking, I'm not smoking. 
I'm not doing drugs anymore. I'm done with this lifestyle. Mm. And about nine years ago, I gave it all up. Wow. Just yeah. cold turkey. Cold turkey. Dang. Done. Yeah. And you were doing it daily at that point, probably. I was smoking daily. I was drinking probably four or five nights a week. Wow. Um, yeah. So it was pretty bad. Massive change. Yeah. And then from yeah. there, you got into business, right? Got into business. Yeah. And, and got obsessed. Anchor Tiny Homes. So in less than five years, nine figure company. Yeah. Crazy. We did 102 million last year. This year we'll probably do 150 million. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's selling crazy. tiny homes? Selling tiny homes, yeah. We have a franchise concept. So we have our corporate location in Sacramento, California. Mm -hmm. We service like all of the Bay Area, Sacramento. Um, and then we have we're in 28 states and 52 different locations across the country. Wow. Yeah. It's great timing too, because right now people can't afford a regular house. Oh yeah, it's affordable housing crisis. You know, it's like especially in Vegas, Sacramento, the Bay Area. I mean, the entry level house is five, six, seven hundred thousand. Yep. You know, and that's like entry level. It. Yeah. Yeah. So people can't afford it, you know? So we just timed it perfectly. Right. And there's with interest rates rising, it's helped us as well. Cause people are like, well, I can't afford a six, $800,000 house. I need to think of an alternative solution. Mm. Yeah. So how much are your houses? Anywhere from 150 to 250,000 on that's average. Super affordable for yeah. a house. Yeah. Most and of the time, anywhere from 500 to 800 square feet. Okay. Yeah. So it's about one bedroom. It's like an apartment size yeah. almost. Yeah. One to two bed. Yeah. People sneak two bed in like a 700 square foot. Okay. Yeah. What's the biggest model you have? 1200 square feet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We mostly sell 500 to 800. Every once in a while, we'll do like a thousand to 1200, but yeah. most people hover in the five to 800. And you need to own the land to per, to put it down too, right? Yeah, so it's an accessory dwelling unit. So granny flat, mother-in-law quarters, most people know those terms. Mm -hmm. um, it's a backyard home. So there's a single family home on the lot, and then we build an ADU in the backyard. Got it. Yeah. How did you even come up with this idea? So it was uh, kind of a funny story. About five years ago, 2019, July 2019, my wife was pregnant with our first daughter at the time. Um, and I had a marketing company at the time. I mean, I think I had 15 clients, um, but nothing was taking off, right? I knew I wanted to be in business. I knew I wanted to build a, a company and I was just starting this business and nothing was taking off. So in 2019, I saw an ad on Facebook for a tiny home competitor and my dad's a general contractor. So I went to him the next day. I said, Hey, do you think we could build tiny homes? Um, he said, yes. So I ended up throwing up a free Facebook marketplace ad, didn't even pay for an ad. Mm. And we had 300 inquiries in the first three days. Wow. So it was like an aha moment. I'm like, wow, a lot of people want this product. So ended up meeting with clients at coffee shops and trying to sell them on tiny homes. I ended up selling two tiny homes the first month. Dang. One was like 90,000. The second was like 110,000. So our first month in business, we did 200,000 in revenue. I quit the marketing gig and we went all in. It's actually me, my dad, and my brother. Mm. Uh, it's a family business. Interesting. And it's yeah. still family. Have you raised outside capital? Or? We have not. No. Wow. We've bootstrapped this whole thing. The fact you've done that with this revenue is really rare. It's I feel insane. Like. Yeah. Like, it's stressful sometimes. Yeah. I bet. <laughs> yeah. I bet. To get to that next level though, because you said you're just in a few cities right now, right? Yeah. So we're in, we're in 28 states now. Um, we've launched. So we have basically 147 territories sold, mm -hmm. which is basically a populace of 300,000 people. Um, and we have 147 territories sold. We have 50 of them launched. Most of those sales have come in the last six months. Got it. So we're getting like Las Vegas is launching oh, uh, nice. June 2nd. Um, we have Phoenix that launched last week. So a lot of places are launching over the next, you know, four to six months. That's exciting. So yeah. you'll be able to just go online and buy one? No. So it's stick built on site. So you have to work with a local franchisee. Oh, okay. So yeah. they build it for you. They build you. it. Yep. Oh, yep. I thought it came already like built. No, we build it on site. Got so it. everything we do is on-site stick built construction. And how long does it take to build? Uh, four to six months okay. on average. Yeah. It's not too bad. Yeah. And, it, and there's a bathroom inside and everything? Bathroom, kitchen, the whole thing. It's a full house. Dang. Yeah. And if you finance it, you only got to put down like 25K for a house. Well, you could put zero down. Yeah? Yeah. So what people are doing is pulling out home equity lines of credit, um, just pulling out, let's say, 200000 out of their house. And let's say the payment is 1500 a month. They don't have to come out of pocket at all. Wow. It's zero money down. They just pull it out of their house. And then the payments are 1500 to 1800 a month. Dude, that's super cool. Yeah. Man, this is, this is cool. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see if this can scale internationally too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we just, we're, I have a meeting with an attorney tomorrow uh, to set up Canada. Wow. Um, so we're going to go to Canada next. Hell yeah, man. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. You also have a Christian entrepreneur group? I do. Yeah. It's not fully launched. So if you go to my website, coltonpolis.com, um, you can sign up for the waiting list, but we're going to launch. Um, basically, the reason I'm doing it is because I've always wanted a group of Christian entrepreneurs to like bounce ideas off and, and go through the same struggles with, right? right? It's just hard to find a community of people um, that are like-minded, yeah. right? Like that, that believe the same, think the same. 
have big dreams. You know, I feel like it's this taboo thing in the Christian world of like, you either have to be broke and a Christian or be a business. <laughs> I'm like, no, that's not real. Like we can be successful, but also be a Christian. Yeah. Like, I just don't believe the, the concept of like, I have to be broke, poor, and a believer. I believe I can be rich, wealthy, have impact, give back to people and be a Christian. Yeah. You know? So I'm just wanting to build a community around that of people who are all in in their faith and all in in their business. Mm. What do you think about these mega churches? Um, it's a good question. It's a deep talk. I think a lot of them get a bad rap. I think a lot of them do things wrong. Yeah. Um, I think the hard part is there's one perfect person that walked this earth. It's Jesus Christ. Mm. And at the end of the day, humans are going to make mistakes. So the lead pastor of, let's say, Hillsong Church or Elevation or some of these large mega churches, they're just people like me and you, right? right? They're going to make mistakes. And what happens is, is if they make a mistake, it just goes viral and people hate on them. Yeah. You know? But it's like, they're. I just think I have a little empathy for them because I've built a nine-figure business. I know what it's like to have a lot of people looking to you. Mm. And it's even 10 times more when you're a Christian, uh, you know, starting a church. Right. So, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of in the middle. Like, I think they have a place. Um, but at the same time, I think they get a bad rap because they are going to make mistakes. You yeah. Know? And they just, they're going to get blasted for it. But people don't realize, like, they're just humans like me and you. The biggest heat I see them getting is mainly on the financial side. Yeah. It, with how they spend the money. Correct. So that one to me is kind of messed up. Yeah. If they're buying supercars and nice oh, yeah, houses and sure. stuff. Yeah. So from that point of view, it's weird. Like yeah. you're donating your money to fund their lifestyle. For sure. Yeah. So I think it now if they write books or speak at conferences and make money that way and kind of have a side thing, I yeah. think it's okay. Like they build their personal brand. Yeah, that's fine. Right. I think that's fine. But if they're taking money and income from the church, that's an issue. That'd I be, totally agree. With yeah. That. So yeah. that being said, do you, do you find a church you align with near yeah. you? Yeah. 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 We go to, me and my wife go to Jesus Culture um, in Folsom, California. So mm. uh, pastored by Banning Liebscher. And yeah, it's a cool, good local church. Nice. Yeah. It's cool to see you make that transition, man, because yeah. you've faced a lot of demons before this. Big time. Yeah. yeah you had time. that addiction and everything. Yep. And I think what happens is a lot of people who are all in people, like you might be able to relate to this, but you go all in on things, right? you just have to be able to switch it to something positive, right? right? Like I was an all in person when I was 130 pounds heavier, right? I was overeating, mm. but I had to transition and say, I'm going to get all in, in my fitness journey and get healthy. You know, same thing in business. I was an all in partier. I was an all in smoker, you <laughs> know, but you just have to transition it and say, I'm going to go all in on things that serve me versus things that are a detriment to my mm. life. Yeah. You know? Same. I was a huge PC gamer, but yeah. that was just a lot of time, you know? Yeah. I have that all-in mentality. It helps in business, though. It does, for sure. You yeah, just you get just, locked in and just you have a one-track mind and you go get what you want. Yep, you know, you got to channel it. Yeah. How often you work on these days? Honestly, people are surprised with this. It's about 40 to 50 hours a week. Oh, it's not so, bad. Yeah, it's, I'm not like a... Uh, I mean, I did in the beginning work long hours, right? Like super long hours. But I believe if I build the right team, the right infrastructure, and have the right support around me, mm -hmm. um, I can delegate a lot of things. That's and that's cool. what we've done. We have 106 employees now. Are you interested in coming on the Digital Social Hour podcast as a guest? We'll click the application link below in the description of this video. We are always looking for cool stories, cool entrepreneurs to talk to about business and life. Click the application link below, and here's the episode, guys. Um, and I have really high-level operators that help me. Dude, that's really lean for that revenue. That's like a million dollars an employee. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. because what we do is we outsource to local general contractors. So our model is, is we're a design build firm. So we do the design, we do the permitting, but then we outsource our labor mm. to local general contractors. Got it. Yeah. So your team's not even on site when they're building. No, we just have project managers that oversee the generals. Interesting. What a business yeah. model. So you're almost like middle manning we the are. deal. Totally middle manning. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. It's And the reason we did that is because it's scalable. Yeah. Like we knew early on we wanted this to be a national company. And the way we had to do that was we weren't going to have foundation people and framers and drywall guys in-house. We had to outsource. Yeah. It'd also be too expensive, right? Yeah. It'd just be too much. You'd yeah. have to, we would have to raise capital. You, know? you said the best decision you ever made for the business was to franchise. Yeah. How yeah. come? The scalability. The scalability. So we did the hard part of building the brand, the system, the process. We made mistakes, hired the wrong contractors, had to build out the infrastructure. But the ability to franchise, there's a statement in the franchise world. Once you go franchising, you don't ever go back. Mm. And the reason is, is, I mean, think about it like this, right? You're collecting royalty, 6 to 8% royalty, depending, or 5 to 8% royalty of top line revenue. And other people are funding the growth. 
and then you're just helping them scale. So, and it's a win-win for them, for the franchisee, because at the end of the day, what they're doing is they're taking an existing business model that's working, proven, you know, and scalable, and then they just implement themselves and their, pro their uh, you know, team uh, to follow a system and a process. So it's a win-win. You can scale like we are in 28 states in, in a year and a half. Wow. Yeah. I saw you with uh, Andy Elliott yep. on YouTube. Yeah. Has that been a friend of yours? Yeah. 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 I talk to Andy all the time. I actually do a monthly podcast with him. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, just, we, we connected like four or five months ago. Um, so yeah, he's been, a, he's been a real inspiration and just someone I've connected with. Yeah. yeah. Is that someone you, you met online and you just liked what, what his messaging was? Yeah. 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 I just really resonated with, uh, kind of his approach. I mean, he can be a little risky, <laughs> right? Like a little yeah. intense for yeah, some yeah. people, but I just like how he's like, Hey, we're going to go all in. Like we're a no BS type of person and we're going to make this happen. Yeah. yeah. Did he tell you to take your shirt off when you met him? <laughs> he did. He, he did? actually did. Oh yeah. my gosh. On the podcast within five minutes of meeting him, he <laughs> didn't take my shirt off. I was yeah. actually joking when I asked that. <laughs> I, I literally did. I, I told them, I'm like, I wonder if he's going to make us take our, to make me take my shirt yeah. off. And I was joking. And then literally within five minutes, he's like, take your shirt off. Dude, like, that's, dang, that's dude. so funny. He yeah. didn't do that to me when I interviewed him, but I'm sure if I was the guest, he would have. Yeah. Yeah. He flew out here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny, dude. Yeah. I mean, you are vulnerable for some reason when your shirt's off. I don't know what it is. It is, yeah. If you're a little yeah. fat. You're exposed, you're gonna, man. Yeah. <laughs> you're exposed. Yeah, man. <laughs> I saw on another show, uh, you do 250 push-ups a day. Yeah, yeah. That's so, a lot. So 62 days ago now, I think it is, um, I just made a challenge where I'm going to do 250 push-ups every single day until I get to 250 pounds. Okay. Yeah. So what do you got now? Uh, 303 as of this morning. So you got to drop 53 pounds. Yeah. That's the goal. That's the end goal. Two fifty. That's the end goal. Yeah. Okay. When I'm two fifty, I'm I'm just a bigger guy, right? Yeah. So when I'm two fifty, I'm I'm pretty ripped at that weight. Yeah. I mean, you look ripped right now. Yeah. I don't know how I'm gonna lose fifty three more pounds, but be, I gotta yeah. do it. Yeah. You're gonna be shredded. <laughs> yeah. God damn. Yeah. So you're lifting heavy right now, like going to the gym. Not every heavy, day? like twelve to fifteen reps, but I go to the gym four times a week. Damn. Um I always knew how to work out because I played sports. Yeah. I just also knew how to eat. <laughs> I feel like I just, you know what I mean? Like I knew how to work out and I like working out. I just also liked food. It was my crutch. So I just had to break that demon and break that tie. And I did. Mm. Um, now I'm kind of all in on this workout health journey. I feel that. How yeah. do you feel about the state of the NFL right now? Um, I like where it's headed. I like oh. where it's headed. Yeah. Yeah. I like where it's headed. I mean, I wish they let defensive players do a little more and they yep. let, you know, it be a more physical game, but I understand why they're doing it. You know, it's, it's health and longevity and, you know, CTE and all that kind of yep. stuff. So I get it. But at the same time, I do wish it was a little more violent like it used to be, mm. you know, because I'm a defensive guy. I played D end. I played, you know, D tackle. My brother was a linebacker. Um, but overall, I like where it's headed. Yeah. I feel like it must yeah. be tough to be a defender now because there's certain spots you can't tackle now, right? You can't. <laughs> oh, it's insane. You yeah. can't even hit them in certain areas. Can't tackle them below their knees and you can't hit above the shoulders. Wow. You, you literally have like a little, you know, portion of their body you can tackle. Yeah. So just from shoulders to your kneecap. To your kneecap. Dang. Yeah. I wonder why they stopped the, the below the knees one. Because so many people were getting ACL tears and uh -huh. ending their careers. So. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. Is that a newer one? That's a newer one. About three, four years ago. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the uh, all-star game was just a joke. Did yeah. you see that? Yeah, I did. <laughs> it's flag football, basically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They just don't want to get hurt. You yeah. Know? That's the biggest thing. Same with NBA all-star. That was kind of weak, too, this yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they don't want to get hurt too, no. but nobody's playing defense. That's the thing. Yeah. yeah. I, they should do like a one on one or threes yeah. instead of a all star game. I think so. That'd be sure. way more fun. Yeah. Especially because the guys aren't bought into it. You know, yeah. it's like, okay, let's move on from this. Let's think of something else. Yeah. Yeah. Who you got winning the NBA finals this playoffs? I'm, I'm going to rock with Boston, the okay. Boston Celtics. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's going to be Denver versus the Celtics. Mm. That, that's, that would be my guess. Um, I know Minnesota just won last night or two nights ago. And they got game two tonight, but I just, I just trust their, uh, championship pedigree. Um, and I think they're going to win the West. And then I think they're going to be so beat up from having to go through the Lakers through Minnesota and probably OKC or, or the Mavericks, um, that Boston's just going to skate to the finals. Yeah. So I think they're going to win. That'd yeah, be Bo my guess. Boston's going to beat the Cavs in five probably yeah. and the Knicks in six. So yeah. they'll be pretty, yeah. pretty clean. That's right. But playoffs are about staying healthy. That's so. right. If no one gets injured, then yeah. yeah, I can see Boston. Yeah, I I think they're they're finally ready. Yeah, because they've been to the finals like what twice now. They've been to the finals twice. They've been to the Eastern Conference Finals so many times. I just think it's Jason Tatum's time to go get a ring. Yeah, he needs to get that next up. Yeah. Anything else you watch these days? Not really. No, I'm a big sports fan. Uh, I watch Shark Tank here and there just because yeah. it's kind of a relaxing you know show. But no, I mean I like working out. You know, sports. 
Shark Tank and then just building the companies. Love it. Yeah. Who's the best judge on Shark Tank in your opinion? Best judge on Shark Tank. I'd probably say Mark Cuban. I know mm. everybody would probably say that, but yeah. um, I like Kevin O'Leary and his drama, you yeah. know, but um, I'd say Mark Cuban or Kevin O'Leary. Kevin's the most honest, I'd say. For sure. He tells but, it like it is. Yeah. Yeah. Mark is very objective though. I like Mark. Me too. But somehow uh, I think, I think Barbara has the best investments. Yeah, she does. She's scaled her and her and Lori actually. Lori yeah. had two hundred million dollar companies, so because yeah. I think guys are so objective. Yeah, so they'll they'll just see the numbers, but the girls can relate. You yeah. know, yeah, they have the instinct. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure. Good woman by your side is important. You know, big time. Yeah. yeah, you met your wife recently? Uh, not recently. We met um, seven and a half, eight years ago now, and been married for six in April. Wow, um, so you got and, married after two years. Yeah, it was less than two years actually. We dated for four months and mm -hmm. then got married two months after that. what yeah crazy yeah oh, so you knew right away knew right away yeah we were in a friend group before so okay. like we hung out you know at parties or you know we went to church together and there was a friend group we'd, we would hang out with mm. so we got to know each other before that um but yeah we just moved fast we just nice. knew yeah yeah that is very fast i'm seven years in now okay yeah, yeah. getting married next year nice took my time <laughs> that's right my dad scarred me man oh he did he yeah. told me every day growing up not to get married wow every single day two divorces wow yeah problem is a lot of people project their yeah. their problems onto you that's what it is so yeah. with parenting i got to be cognizant of that that's right because yeah. just because you had a bad experience yeah. i mean and a lot of times you're not even aware that you're doing it right? right it's like you learned a behavior from someone and then you still do that behavior even though you don't like it but you still act that way facts because yeah. your environment is just that's so right. impactful and influential yeah. That's why I think your Christian group is going to be massive. I think so too. Yeah. yeah I'm very excited for that. Entrepreneurship is a lonely space, especially at your level. Mm -hmm. There's not many people you could go to and talk to about your problems. It's tough, man. It's, it's like you, you have conversations with people. It's like, how do you relate to what they're <laughs> doing in their life? Because it's so hard. You yeah. Know? It's just, it's a different conversation. Yeah, you know? for sure. That's yeah. why you and Andy probably are yeah, close because you guys sure. are dealing with the same things. That's right. Nine figure problems. That's right. Um, you're going all in on social media this year? All in, man. Yeah, we started uh, November of last year. Um, grown to not eleven million followers, <laughs> but thirty thousand followers now. So we're we're growing, man. I, I see the value in building a personal brand. Yeah. I think long term, like the the full play is we want to build a holdings company and help home service brands scale. Mm -hmm. um, so as we get this thing to you know one hundred fifty two hundred locations, we want to add businesses to our portfolio. And I think a way to do that is to build a personal brand and attract. Come, uh, brands into our ecosystem. Got it. So yeah. you're going to acquire these brands? Acquire them, help them scale, maybe do a rev share model. Mm -hmm. We'll figure out the exact strategy. Probably acquire larger companies and then help smaller businesses scale with Got a it. rev share model. Interesting. And do you want to exit this thing one day? Yeah, for sure. That's the goal? Yeah. yeah. Billion? Yeah, we want to be a multi-billion dollar exit. Yeah. Love it, man. Yeah. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Doesn't happen often. No, well, you're already tough. one tenth there. So yeah, yeah, we actually just got a private uh, valuation for 150 million. So Holy if we, crap! If we wanted to sell, we could sell for like 120 to 150 million. Was that tempting to take that? It was, <laughs> but, but we see where we can go. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I think it's easy if we just wanted a quick buck. I just think we're so close to getting to 500, 700, a billion dollars um, that we're going to be patient. Yeah, and yeah. it's just three of you guys. Just three of us, and all family. All family. So yeah. talk to me about making that work because that usually doesn't work out with family or friends. <clears throat> yeah, for us, it, we made a decision early on to stay in our own lanes. So we had a conversation. We said, okay, you're going to do this, you're going to do this, and you're going to do this, and we're going to get out of each other's way, um, and we're going to come together on decisions. Even if we argue, what we've done really well is keep it between the lines. Mm -hmm. So like me and my brother played sports. My dad played uh, semi-pro soccer. Mm -hmm. So we understand like, hey, early on, like we understood early on, let's make sure that we keep this between the lines. So if we argue about something, if we have a disagreement, it's just business. Mm. We're not going to take this to a family dinner and start arguing about, the, about it at family dinner. We're going to hang out. We're going to be family outside of work, and we're going to treat this separate. Love it. Yeah. So you just completely separate the two. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Not to say we don't talk about work at, you know, family functions. Yeah. But we just made a decision. If there's a disagreement, it's not personal. Mm. Like, Let's not be personal about this. Let's not get insecure and offended. Let's just make sure that we keep business, business, and family, family. Mm, love that. Did your yeah. dad have a lot of business experience? He did. Yeah. 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 He scaled, he scaled three companies. Um, 
I, mean, I think the largest company he built had 25 employees. Okay. So it was local to Sacramento, but he built a shed and garage manufacturing company. Got it. Similar to like a tough shed um, that was in the Bay Area in Sacramento. So he's been a big mentor to you through this? He has. Yeah. Big time. Yep. Yep. And he, uh, I just grew up around business builders, mm -hmm. right? Like he had friends that were company owners. Uh, the lifestyle of freedom was really big to me early on. Like I saw his journey and saw that he could go to our practices. He could go to our games. He could right. show up for things when we were traveling um, when most parents couldn't. And mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I want that lifestyle. Yeah. So you saw his journey, but just got a little distracted on the way. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. as a guy on a football team, star player, it's very easy. It's to, so easy. Yeah. yeah the world's thrown at you. you yeah. Know? People are in your ear just hyping you up all day. Right. Like you think you must have had some ego battles mm -hmm. back then too, right? Big time. Yeah. You go to a party. That's like, you're one of the stars at the party. Yeah. You know I mean, it's, it's just tough. It's yeah. tough. I can't even imagine what NBA and NFL players deal with. It's crazy. They get both now because they get bad game on social media. You see it everywhere. Yeah. So like D'Angelo Russell got a ton of heat if he had a bad game yep. and then it's yeah, everyone tough. wants him cut now. Yeah. <laughs> everyone wants him cut because if, if you perform bad in the playoffs, I mean, they're paying yeah. you a lot. So yeah, it's tough, man. I think uh, being a pro athlete, I don't think I'd have social media if I was one. Yeah. No, me neither. It's just too easy it's to get wrapped hard. up in that. Yeah. A very negative place yeah or at least have someone manage it but don't log in and check it yeah you know you'll see it as you grow because andy elliott even guys like him get hate oh all the time yeah yeah, yeah it's crazy what he gets now nuts dude yeah. yeah every day yeah i wonder how he's holding up i mean he probably doesn't even care yeah do you get any of that on i get some yeah. yeah everyone with the following i mean you'll yeah. start to get some if yeah. you haven't already yeah you could do whatever. I mean, you could cure world hunger. You'll get hate. You know it's what I mean? Crazy. There's going to be yeah. someone hating on that. <laughs> yeah. What is it in the comments typically? Or? Comments, DMs. The yeah. DMs, I, I get so many. I just delete it. Yeah. But the comments, I just leave them up. Yeah. I don't respond. Yeah. Some people do, but. Yeah, it helps the algorithm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Thanks, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> but dude, uh, anything else you want to close off with or promote? No, I mean, I think the biggest thing I would say is um, we're just, we're building the Christian community, which I'm really excited about. But then if they want to franchise with us, uh, anchoredtinyhomes.com, we we're franchising across the country. You know, uh, locations are getting taken up right now. Mm -hmm. So we're in 28 different locations, uh, 28 states rather. Um, but our goal is to be a nationwide company. So if people want are interested in partnering with us on the franchise level, they can go to anchortinyhomes.com. Perfect. We'll link it in the description. Thanks okay. for coming on, man. Yeah, that was appreciate fun. it, man. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, thanks for watching, guys. See you tomorrow.